Hello and welcome to the Atlantic Fellows Podcast. I'm Fanula Sweeney. The Atlantic Fellowship Program works with a diverse community of leaders around the world with a common commitment to fairer, healthier, more inclusive societies. Through its seven programs focused on equity in healthcare, socioeconomic equity, and racial equity, the Atlantic Fellowships offer committed leaders across the globe an opportunity to gain new perspectives and new colleagues while strengthening their competence and confidence in their work for change. In each podcast, I'll be speaking to an Atlantic Fellow about their work and ambitions for a more just world. I'm speaking with Neela Tanzil, Atlantic Fellow for Health Equity in Southeast Asia. Neela is based in Indonesia and was about to open her 100th library for school children to promote literacy. I first asked her where she got the idea. I first got the idea to build my NGO named Rainbow Reading Gardens when I was in Flores Island back in 2009. Flores Island is in Indonesia, in eastern part of Indonesia. And Indonesia has lots and lots of 17,000 island. islands. 17,000. <laughs> yes, yes. On Flores Island, they have Komodo dragons. It's an endangered species. species. Yes. I was working as a communications consultant for the Nature Conservancy. During my spare time, I went diving and it was great. But after four months of seeing manta rays and sharks, I'm like, okay, maybe I should take a break from diving. Then I explored small villages that were very remote. Visiting those villages, I saw that schools didn't have libraries. These remote villages don't even have access to electricity nor fresh water, let alone access to books. Did this shock you? Yes and no. Especially in eastern part of Indonesia, there are so many underdeveloped areas. So I expected that it would be this bad, quote unquote. However, seeing myself that the kids didn't have any access to books, nor electricity, no fresh water, how simple people live, it really shocked me and it really inspired me to do something about it. So I went back to my rented house in Labuan Bajo in the bigger town and I couldn't sleep for nights thinking of how could I make a difference. But I was alone and then the education problems are so many. I was like, what can I do? Me, Nila, alone. One of the factors of education is access to books. It's very key. So I thought, hmm, I think I could build a small library in one village. I got a concept and I searched for locations At that time, I searched for three locations. The idea is every month I would build one new library and then I would buy books from Jakarta and ship them to Flores. So every library will have enough books. Every three months, I will rotate it so that we didn't have to buy books for a year, for example. Who did you talk to about building these libraries on the islands? In the beginning, the locations were in local people's houses. But yes, I talked to the school principals and teachers. After I found the perfect locations, then I flew back to Jakarta, bought a lot of books from a bookstore. I found one person who could give me discount. (laughs) He gave me 30% off, which was great. But another challenge was to ship those books, which was expensive. Excess baggage on the plane, it cost a fortune, but it's okay because I was really willing to do it. To me, this is important because I couldn't imagine my childhood without books. So I couldn't imagine these kids who live in these villages didn't have any access to books at all and never had the experience to feel the joy of reading. You're about to open your 100th library now. Mm -hmm. So clearly the project is going very, very well. What kind of feedback are you getting from the children themselves? The children were so happy. They got inspiration from the books that they read. By the way, the libraries are now located in schools, no longer in local people's houses. If we're going to build a library in a school, I asked them, what do you want to be in the future? The answers were only two. Either they wanted to be a teacher or they wanted to be a priest. For kids who live in the mountains, most of them are Catholic. So these are the two professions that they thought, ooh, it's cool. They couldn't think of other professions. But a few months after the library was opened, we asked the same question again. And they said that, I want to be pilot. I want to be doctor. I want to be an archaeologist. That's extraordinary. Their horizons had broadened. Yes, yes, yes. So you could see real impact. 
all this time, were you still working at your communications job? I had a full-time job and then I managed my NGO. But only until four years ago when the NGO had 29 libraries, it got so busy. And then I realized that I enjoyed more doing this <laughs> than my daily job, which paid way, way, way much better. But I felt that maybe I could better use my time if I do this full time. So yeah, I brave myself to leave my corporate career behind and do this full time. That was a very brave decision. And what prompted you to join the Health Equity Fellowship in Southeast Asia? I wanted to join Health Equity because they have leadership sessions and I think it would be good for my personal development because I'm the founder of an NGO. I also created a social enterprise, Travel Sparks. What have you learned in the fellowship? You've met people from other different countries in Southeast Asia doing different kind of projects. Yeah. What has that been like as an experience? It's amazing because all of us were leaders in our own sectors and country, and we learned so much from each other. A lot of us faced same challenges <laughs> in terms of leadership. For example, we talked about how hard it is to manage staff and things like that. It's really good to have a safe space to talk about this. And what are your thoughts about the Atlantic Fellowship, which of course is in some ways an extension of the Health Equity Fellowship? Has that changed your outlook in any way or have you learned new things? Being part of Atlantic Fellows is great because... It's more international exposure. So I meet fellows from different parts of the world, not only from Southeast Asia and China. There is an opportunity for cross-collaboration in what we do. Hopefully we could do something together. We could create a project together, partnership to make a bigger impact. What kind of impact would you like to continue making in Indonesia? I want still to build more libraries in Indonesia in remote villages because to me, education is one of the key factors if a country wanted to succeed in the future. I think every child has the right to quality education and to access to books. No matter if you were born in big cities or in remote areas, you have the same rights and this is our duty to fix it. We'll leave it there, Nila. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was Neela Tanzel, Atlantic Fellow for Health Equity in Southeast Asia. For more information, you can visit www.equityinitiative.org or www.atlanticfellows.org. I'm Fanula Sweeney, and you've been listening to an Atlantic Fellows podcast.